Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. In this video, I will be showing you how to perform ANOVA test with complete detailed calculation using Excel. So if you're looking for how to do ANOVA test, just get the final result using Excel analysis tool pack features, then look for the other videos on my channel on how to do that. In this video, I'll be showing you, as I said, a complete details calculation of the ANOVA. We're going to start with the one-way ANOVA and I've already set up the worksheet uh, to save time and typing so I'm going to go over each step. So here we have um, ANOVA test, we're performing ANOVA test for uh, three treatments and each treatment has five subjects. I'm going to start with finding the mean for each treatment and for that all we have to do is use the average function so if you type the average function and then you choose the five sets the five subjects here or six or seven depending how many you have this will give me the average I will repeat the same thing for the second and the third treatment and you can see here that's the average in my case d3 till d7 so that's the average or the mean or m in some textbook the total for each treatment all we have to do is use the sum function to do that so similar to the average I'm going to use sum and highlight all of this and this will give me the total t for each treatment and of course I will repeat it over here for the n or the number of subjects you can just count them or if you have lots of subject in each treatment then we can just use the function count and we select these values and it will count how many treatments or sorry how many subjects do we have finally we have to calculate the sum of squares as you know the sum of square formula it's the sum of x square minus the sum of x all square divided by n so for that I'm going to be using the sum be careful with this this is the sum square function and I will just select these values here so this function what it will do it will take each value of these and square it then add them all up minus the sum of these values which is the total as we found it so I can use this cell if I want instead of sum b3 b7 I can use just b9 square it so this is the square of the sum divided by the total n and we'll repeat that over here and as you can see it's the same idea sum sq the sum of squares so this will sum the squares of the value it will square each value then sum them this will sum them then I will square them so this is sigma x square and this is sigma all square over n the other thing we need as we know is sigma x square and as you you might guess this is what I will use the sum sq here but in this case I need sigma x square for all of them so I will select from b3 all the way to d7 so I will select all subjects in every treatment this is per treatment the one here is for each treatment this is the total sum of squares g is the total the grand total as we call it so I'm gonna use the sum function to add all of these or remember I can add the three totals so either sum b3 to d7 or sum b9 to d9 and of course here n is the grand n which is as we know either I count all of these or I add these ends so here I use count b3 to d7 
but I can also just say sum these three cells over here, B10 to D10. And of course, we have K, the number of treatments. You can just count these cells or enter three. So now we have our sigma x square gn and the mean total n and sum of squares. We can go ahead and calculate the sum of square for the total, the sum of square between, and the sum of square within. And of course, the degree of freedom for the total between and within, which is the numerator and denominator, and then we're going to find the mean square and the f test. So first, for the sum of square total, as we know, it's sigma x square minus g square over n. So all I have to do is select sigma x square from here, minus, take g from here, square it, and divide by n. That's why it's e3 minus e4 square divided by e5. Sigma x square minus g square over n. The sum of square for the between and the sum of square for the within, we use the formula for them, or you can subtract when you find one of them from the total to get the other. So the sum of square within, as we know, is the sum of all these sum of squares. And that's what I will use. Sum B11 to D11. Just add these sum of squares. For the between, I can simply say it's the total minus the within, and this will give me the between. Or, if I want to use the formula, then what's the formula for sum of square between? It's the square of the total, the square of each total divided by n. So I'm going to take b9 squared divided by b10, c9 squared divided by c10, and d9 squared divided by d10. Minus g squared over n, so which is e4, in this case, square it, and divide by uppercase n. Now here, since it's the same denominator, the n value is all the same, 5, it happens in this case, but remember, the number of treatment doesn't have to be the same, then I can just use the sum of square formula. I take sum of square of these t's, then I divide only by n at the end. But I kept it this way, just in case you have different number of subjects in each treatment. Okay, so we have the sum of square for the total, the between, and within. For the degree of freedom, for the total, as we know, it's n minus 1. So I will just take n from here, minus 1. For the numerator, it's k minus 1. So I will take k from here, subtract it from 1. And for the within, as we know, it's the total minus the degree of freedom for the between or it's n minus k. So here I took n minus k, 15 minus 3 gives me 12, or 14 minus 2 gives me 12. Next, we're going to find the mean square between and the mean square within. And here, all I have to do is divide the sum of square by the degree of freedom. So that's why you see it takes the sum of square between divided by the degree of freedom between and the same for the mean square within. The sum of square within divided by the degree of freedom within. Finally, we're going to find the F ratio or the F test statistics, which is the mean square between divided by the mean square within. So I will put P17 divided by P18. For the critical value, I don't need to go to the F table to get it. I will be using the F.env.rt function in Excel. F.env.rt. This gives me the critical value for the F test. And what I have to do is give it the significant level, which is in this case 1%. Degree of freedom for the numerator, which is E14 in this case, over here and the degree of freedom for the denominator, which is over here. 
So 1%, E14 in my case, and E15, and it gives me the critical value. The other thing that I can do is just let Excel determine the decision for me. How do I do that? I will use the if function. And I will say if the, critical, the test statistics is greater than the critical value, which means it's on the right of the critical value. So if P20 is greater than E20, then put the result reject. Else put fail to reject. And that's why the decision is reject. So I'm just going to go here and show you if I type, for example, 5.5, see the decision right away is fail to reject. Because it's on the left of 6.92. Now, for the coloring here, you don't really have to worry about it too much. I just had it as conditional formatting. So I'll show you how to do that quickly. This is the, sorry, make that select. This is the rule that I have. So how do I do this rule? I create on new rule and I choose only cell that contains and I will say equal to and I will type here reject. The same way I typed it in the if statement, then I go and choose the format that I want in terms of background color, font color, and so on, border, fill, etc. This way, whenever there is a word reject here, it gives me this format that I specified. Okay, now let's do, for example, the post hoc test, the Tuckies post hoc test, and eta square. Eta square, as we know, is the sum of squares between divided by the sum of squares total. So I'll just take B14 divided by B13, these ones here, and it gives me eta square, 65.22%. To do the tuckies, I need the Q value, but this I have to get it from the table, the Q table. I need the MS within, which is here, and I need N, which is five. So the HST, as we know, it's a Q times the square root of MS within over N. So I will take P25 times the square root of MS within B26 divided by B27. And then I'm going to take each two treatments together and get the mean for each treatment. I will get them from the table that I already did. So this I will get it from B8. As you can see, it's B8, where B8 is the mean. And then I will just subtract each two means. 4 minus 1, A32 minus B32, as you can see here. The same idea here and the same idea here. And then I'm going to compare if the value here is greater than the HSD, then reject, which means these are significantly different. So the same idea to distinguish between reject and fail to reject, I will use conditional formatting. But this time I will say what? If the cell value, which is here, is greater than the HSD, B29, right? So if the cell value is greater than B29, which is this, change the formatting to red and yellow. So right away, if this is greater than HSD, it will make it red and yellow, and it, that means it's reject. And if there is nothing happening here, it's failed to reject. 